Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Bocce Boys. I'm bringing them in. Davis Hackman, we're back. We're back. I hate to say this, but we're back. All right, Davis. You're muted. I'm just going to tell you that right off the bat. Let's let's get into it, dude, because we're here for one reason only. And there's one thing happening this weekend. Can you tell me what it is? No, I think it might be the Super Bowl, Ethan. I, oh, I think, the I, think Super Bowl right. is I think you're right. Uh, you're right. And I'm really excited for it because it's the Super Bowl, of course. What's not to be excited about, man? It's the Super Bowl. But one of our old foes as an Eagles fan, Patrick Mahomes, he's back. He's back. He's the back. Big dance. And another one of our old foes, an NFC foe, the San Francisco 49ers, who we faced in the NFC Championship last year. This time Correct. they're the NFC champions and they're in the Super Bowl. What do you think about that? Look, this time he has a UCL. So, uh, you know, I think that uh, hopefully he'll play a little bit better. Uh, biasly, yeah. we'll talk about that later. But, I yeah. mean, I think, um, you know, it's going to be a great heavyweight match. I, You know, everyone was down on the Chiefs, um, yeah. you know, towards the end of the season, getting into the playoffs. But, you know, honestly, these are the best two teams in football. Sorry, Baltimore. Dude. But I yep. really do believe these are the best two teams in football. And it's going to be a, a great four-hour show. I agree. And, like, here's something that's rare. Like, preseason you see these teams and you're like who's gonna be in the super bowl and you'd be like niners and the chiefs and you'd be like okay sure but like who's really gonna be super bowl because like that never happens the best team preseason this it happened dude we have we have and what even happened even crazier is the chiefs got worse but somehow got better and then niners like got even more blue chip prospects and they got better what is the x factor for both teams being here besides you know patrick mahomes obviously I mean, look, it's got to be Christian McCaffrey. I mean, oh, yeah. you can't you can't look at this Super Bowl without thinking that he's the X factor. If he if he pulls out a classic Christian McCaffrey game, ninety five yards on the ground, 30, yeah. re, 30 receiving yards, five catches, two touchdowns. I mean, that's your ball game right there. And you know that's where I think San Francisco just dominates. And Kansas City's yeah. ranked around I don't know it off the top of my head around twenty fifth to thirtieth in the league in rush defense. I mean, yeah. This is where it comes down to, um, you know, 60 minutes of football. And I think Christian McCaffrey is the X factor. I couldn't agree more. I mean, the Chiefs' biggest weakness, like you said, has been their run defense and something the Baltimore Ravens did not exploit. I think they ran the ball, like, besides Lamar, obviously, like a total of like eight times with running backs or something like that. Like, I mean, obviously, we don't know what would have happened in that game, but if they had run it down their throats, we might be talking about a Niners Ravens rematch from that blackout Super Bowl. Who knows? Correct. But yeah, I and mean, you know what? Baltimore, Baltimore really I don't know what John Harbaugh's doing. Or uh yeah. Yeah, John John no, you're Harbaugh. Right. What, you're right. what is he doing? I mean, you're the best running team in the in the league. Yeah, maybe in the last three years, four years, yeah. and yep. you're not running it down their throats. I, I don't understand yeah. Ethan, but you know what? They didn't deserve it. They don't deserve it after that. I also think Lamar doesn't deserve the hate for that because I think you're right. That was a game plan thing. They abandoned that game plan right away. I, I, I think Todd Munkin, the OC for the Ravens, like he was great all year and then just I, I don't know what happened. But anyway, I mean, like like you said, this is a battle of the heavyweights. This is, I mean, Goliath and Goliath. There's no David here. Absolutely not. Um, so, I mean, let's let's think about this game. I mean, the Niners also, let's let's mention, they were behind in their two playoff games. They were not, you know, the favorite Niners we've seen all year, the team that crushed us, the team that crushed Dallas. Like, what version of the Niners are we going to see? Yeah, you, you, I mean, who knows? I mean, we're at a point now where the whole joke in the whole community was that Kyle Shanahan could not hold a lead. Yeah. And you know what I mean? So, and he'd big up, give up big leads. I mean, just looking back, what's the biggest collapse in history, 28 to 3. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. Kyle, serious, Shanahan, Kyle that. Shanahan was at the helm of that. And mm-hmm. it's weird to think about now that he never was able to come back from being down either. And he could also be, down that chief Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Yeah. Cor- they, well, no, they were up. The, uh, no, you're right. You're right. You're Sam right. Your brand was up by 10 with right. like six minutes left and blew it. Um, that's another Kyle Shanahan classic. But yeah, I mean, you go back <laughs> to the last two games. I mean, Detroit had that ball game until Dan Campbell went for it on fourth down there. Yep. And basically, excuse my language, put his nuts on the field. And he was like, he I'm going to do what I did all year. And I'm going to beat you. And guess what? It didn't work. Yeah. And a lot of people are giving Dan Campbell shit for that. Honestly, I, I, I respect it. I respect it. I don't know whether I agree or disagree with it because it's a tough t- situation. You put your nuts on the line. You win the game. That's the position you put yourself in the entire year for. 
So, yeah. I mean, you're right. You're right. And, like, the Niners are going to have to step it up, and the Chiefs are going to have to step it up because, I mean, the Ravens game, they had control, but they were a field goal away from losing a Buffalo. Let's not forget. Correct. Yeah. And you know what? Honestly, I think it's easy to say that that was maybe so far the game of the year. And that has been the game of the year the past yep. few years, the Chiefs Buffalo. And yep. I'm glad that um, Patrick Mahomes is at a place now where it's like uh, he can actually win away from Arrow, uh, Arrowhead. Too. He just didn't have the chance because he's been so good. That's correct. It. Correct. Yeah. So yep. now it's inter- now it's like, OK, maybe he is the already a top 10 quarterback yeah. in history, which I'm behind. I don't know if you're behind. Like, I already think he is a top 10 quarterback in history. He's 28 years old and yep. seeing what he's already Which is done. insane. He's 28. Is absolutely ridiculous. But my yeah. question to you, Ethan, sticking on Patrick Mahomes here. Yeah. Is this another Andy Reid prodigy or is like, is it Patrick Mahomes? Like, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of rumbles that this could be Andy Reid's last NFL football game he's coaching. So yeah. I'm curious to see what you think. I, I mean, this is something I think a lot of people think about and something us as Eagles fans. I mean, we didn't see the whole Andy Reid era, but we experienced a lot of Andy Reid. We know Andy Reid. I, I'm, I love Andy Reid. That's my guy. I'm happy he won a Super Bowl, but not this many. But I will say this is all Mahomes. Like we saw what Brady or Brady, sorry, Reid could do with an above average quarterback. Let's say McNabb was that. He was good, but he didn't have great. He has great now and great is getting it done. I mean, no shade to Andy Reid. Great coach. I mean, he's got a great offensive uh, staff. He has, st- he has Stevie Spags running the defense. Like, mm-hmm. he is a great leader of men, a great head coach. But, I mean, you get over the hump with a guy like this. I mean, Belichick's great, too. But, like, you see what it takes to get over the hump. You need a great quarterback. And, I mean, they sure have a great quarterback. And, like you said, I don't know if I agree if he's a top 10 quarterback, player of all time, whatever you want to say. But you can't deny he's in the conversation. And it will be an argument. It will be an argument. He's making yeah, an argument at 28 yeah. years old. I, I agree. I mean, look, he, I, I, like I said, he's already a top 10 quarterback in my mind of all time. Yeah. Like, I think it literally, if he retired after the Super Bowl, maybe even before the Super Bowl, I would still put him in that conversation of just yeah. most oh, yeah. talented quarterbacks of all time. Maybe not the best quarterback of all time, but when pure it comes talent. to talent, pure talent, there's only yep. a few guys up there. Um, mm-hmm. Like, like that's a weird stat where I don't think I put Tom Brady up there. Like, yeah. I don't like Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback, maybe a top five. I know what you're saying. You're talking skill wise for sure. Skill wise, a hundred percent skill wise. Patrick, I think of the Marinos. I think of Elway, Mahomes. You want to throw Peyton Manning, you know, someone who we don't talk about, maybe Andrew Luck. Yeah. People like a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I'd put even a guy like Drew Brees up there too. Like five eleven. but you know what I mean? So that's where, um, you know, this game's going to be very interesting. And I think it's going to come down to a lot of defense too. I think Christian McCaffrey is going to be, a big factor. Um, For sure. You know, the 49ers defense has basically folded in the last two weeks. They um, they're, they've been getting demo- they got demolished by Andrew, um, Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones, Dave yeah, Montgomery, yeah. and Junior Gibbs. So, they what did. happens to Isaiah Pacheco here? I think Isaiah Pacheco is one of my favorite NFL players in the league right yeah, now. I mean, and I think he he also could be X Factor ish, but it's tough to be an X Factor on your team when you've Patrick Mahomes. Uh, I mean, you said it perfectly there. And he's by far Mahomes and the Chiefs' best running back in the Mahomes era. So, like, he will give him the opportunity to win. That is for sure. And I mean, whoa, whoa, we're not going to talk about Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Come on. What, what, I, I, he's, he's great. He was great at LSU. He was great <laughs> at LSU. Um, but, Davis, let's get down to the nitty gritty here. We've talked about it enough. Let's make some picks. Who, who do you like this Sunday at the big game? Look, I mean, I know you already know this, and probably the seven people who listen to this already know this too, but your boy might have a 10 to one ticket on the 49ers yep. to win the Super Bowl. So, I mean, I'm really hoping that the Niners win. I put that yeah. in back in August, um, right around uh, Labor Day. And uh, so Not I, to brag. I'm, I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible, but I really do think the Niners have the better all, all around team. Um, yeah. Brock Purdy has shown that he can be that guy. Like it, yep. I'm not, I, I'm not worried about him as much as I would have been with Jimmy Garoppolo. Look, Jimmy Garoppolo was a great yeah. quarterback, but he he was not anything special in my opinion. Brock Purdy yeah. can get it done, and so I'm going to go with the Niners. Uh, you had to give me a score prediction. I was going to say, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go. You know, uh, I'm going to have to ride with the under two in this game. I'm going to go 24-20 Niners. Okay. All right, well, I'm hoping for the over. I mean, I think you're right. It's going to be defensive. I'm hoping for a good game, but 
I, I, I think you're right. It's probably right around there. I, I'm not daring to go higher, like 41, 33 kind of Eagles pad Super Bowl, but I'm all over. I'm all over the Niners as well. My heart is telling me though that the Chiefs are going to go back to back. I, I'm really trying to ignore my heart here because my heart's usually right, but it kind of feels like that. But I personally am rooting for the Niners. Go Niners, bang bang, Niner gang, baby. Go Kittle, like it's, Nick McCaffrey. You, you're right. If, if you're this confident in it, why don't we put lunch on it? Right here, right we're now. Gonna, we're probably gonna put lunch on it. We're probably we're gonna most put lunch definitely. On it. I already. I already have some money on the game, but we'll, we'll figure that out later. We'll yeah. figure it out later. But I'm all over the, the Niners. I'm, I'm going to go 27-24 just, just to hit the over. I like the over. And, Ethan, uh, if you give me about two minutes, love to run down some of my props. I don't know if you – if I've told you all of these yet. This Ethan, is the perfect time for props. Hit me tell with me, the props. Tell me how crazy some of these are. All right. All right. I already, already put some of these in. Some of them I'm not – you know, I'm just – I really like them. Yeah. First possession of the game. Can you guess how long you think it is on DraftKings that the first possession of the game will be? I'm going to say like three and a half minutes. Wow. Very close. Three minutes and 10 seconds. Okay. Uh, right, I already right, have, already right, have that second. in. Um, I think that, I mean, you get a first I down. Like look. That. Here's the thing. I, you know, let's imagine um, Sam Frank gets the ball first. Um, oh yeah. Really either team actually. The run game, like I said, has been so good. Yep. I mean, yep. you I, that's game clock, right? It, yeah, correct. So I can't yeah. imagine there being a situation where P Brock Purdy's stepping back the you know three step yeah. drop on first down, the first Agreed. play of the Super Bowl. Like I also can't imagine McCaffrey it, running for one yard. Like they're, they're gonna, gonna make gonna get it, multiple yards. They're gonna make it as easy as possible for Brock Purdy yep. on that first drive, I think. And I'll tell you right yep. now, I, I truly believe. That Brock Purdy's first pass of the game, Ethan already know this off the off the piece as well. Evo. He's minus three hundred. No, Brock Purdy minus three hundred to complete his first pass of the game because okay. it's just going to oh, be okay. a screen pass. He's just going to they're oh. they're going to want to get him. He's Mister Irrelevant. He's literally Mister Irrelevant. Oh, and he whoa, might whoa. win a He's Super Mr. Bowl. Relevant. He's Mister Relevant now. He is Mister Relevant now. But he is not um, irrelevant anymore. Come on, last put some on his name. Last one I want to give you. I've been tossing and turning every night. Thinking about I know this. about this yep. is the prop I that I wake up at three thirty in the morning thinking about. Will the opening kickoff be a touchback? Uh, I uh, think about it every single year. After I thought you're going to say heads or tails. Oh come on, Ethan. That's a that's all a chance. 50-50. Tails but never it's always, fails. It's come always on. heads. It's always heads. <laughs> it's always disagree. Heads. Disagree. What did Mac if you say that? What did Mac if you say? Dude, I don't know if you know this. So they um the football that they used for the opening kickoff is immediately brought to Canton into the Hall of Fame. Oh. So what okay. they do before games, like literally like ball boys and stuff, they'll scuff the ball around. You know what I mean? Like kind of like what they the, – if you remember the whole deflate gate thing. Like yeah, you're they, uh, they warming basically, it up. Yeah, they like war basically warm up yeah. the balls for like 20 like getting minutes. getting a new baseball glove. You got to get the hand in there, loosen it up a little bit. Not this ball. Not this ball. This ball comes <laughs> straight out of the packaging. Dead serious. Wow. Pat McAfee said they you lose about right 10 to the, 15 yards. That's right onto the tee. Right onto the tee, and wow. it, it, okay. it's somewhere around this realm. But uh, the and I know the kickoffs moved from the thirty to the thirty-five. But uh, the there has been in the last, it's like in in the last like twenty years, there has been no touchback like eighteen times, and something crazy, and no touchback plus two wow. plus two thirty-five right now. Free money, free money, well, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think if my worry is Bucker. I think Bucker puts it through. <laughs> Bucker put it through last yeah. year. Um, he did. not worried about Moody, not worried about Moody, but yeah, I'd be Moody is shaky Bucket. to say the least. He is yeah. shaky to say the least. I agree. All right. And then the last prop I got for you, will Travis Kelsey propose if they win? <laughs> See, I'd, I'd rather put my four to one ticket on the Gatorade to be purple than that. <laughs> uh, because there's what about no red? Travis. What do you say? What about red? No way. It's purple all day. Oh, 100%. All right. It's okay. purple. All right. yeah, uh, right. Travis Kelsey does not propose because the Chiefs lose. My answer. I'm Final right there answer. with you. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. But, you know, we support football. So whatever makes football better. All Mr. right, Swift. Guys, Let's – yeah, Mr. Swift. Let's move on to some more football talk, but a little bit different. The NFL coaching carousel. We witnessed a wild coaching carousel. And – we can go about this in multiple different ways. First off, Bill Belichick is no longer the Patriots head coach and doesn't have a job next season. Two things I don't think you thought I would have said last year for sure. I thought he would have gotten another job. 
too. Vrabel's out, wild. We go to college a little bit. Saban's retired, even more wild. Pete Carroll, I, I don't really know whether he retired, went to the front office. Not sure. The list goes on. We can th- we can think of like Jim Harbaugh also went to the Chargers. What was the biggest coaching hiring that made that stood out to you? It's a great question. I, it has to be Jim Harbaugh. I mean, look, as a Penn yeah. State fan, I've <laughs> never been worried about Jim Harbaugh except this past year. I mean, obviously Michigan was so good, and when they came into Happy Valley, Jim Harbaugh wasn't even there. He may have been there. <laughs> there may have been sightings of some khakis we here and there. I remember. We were, yeah. we were looking for him, but uh, you know, I think. It has to be Jim Harbaugh to um, – I almost said San Diego, but I'm going to say San Diego because no, they are you're correct. in my mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, I mean, look, they are a poverty franchise. Like, they are a poverty franchise in my mind. It's so hard to cool say colors. that. They just have cool they colors. They just – they – that old Damien Tomlinson baby blue, Ethan. It's the baby blue. I still see it. that when I look at the Chargers today. I know Herbert's out there in Eckler, but I still see Phil Rivers and LT. I yep. still do it. Yeah, yeah, but it has. To, I think it's Jim Harbaugh, one hundred percent. Yeah, agreed. And I also saw he's bringing a couple people like Jesse Minter and some other assistants. Like he's going to make them the Los Angeles Wolverines. They're going to be tough. They're going to be yeah. tough this year. Yeah. Um, I like that. I like that a lot, though. I'm going to go with something different. I'm going to go with Mike McDonald to the Seattle okay. Seahawks, youngest the coach in the league now. Right there, the youngest coach in the league. We gave Sean McVay so much crap for that. Like we need to give this guy double because. He heard a lot of it. Anyway, this guy, speaking of Sean McVay, is the defense of Sean McVay. He is reinventing defense. He came uh, from Michigan, was it two years ago, under Jim Harbaugh, went to coach under his brother John in Baltimore. He did an amazing job, job this year. Lamar is the MVP for sure, and the offense was great, but the defense is why they were in the AFC Championship and yep. arguably a little close to a Super Bowl. But, yep. um, I mean, it's such a shakeup in Seattle. Pierre Carroll – was there for over a decade at least i think i'm, I'm just saying off the top of my head but maybe around maybe a decade closer to two actually yeah you might say. be right on that like he was a culture guy it's gonna it's gonna suck it's gonna hurt it's gonna change things but this could be a big thing for seattle they're a great franchise they have a great gm like they will always be you know stable they'll always have something to pivot to and like going from defensive coach to defensive coach such an age difference too. I'm fascinated to see what they do. I know Gino's yeah. a great quarterback, but the Seahawks could be on the rise in such a tough division too. I'm I'm fascinated by it. But can we I'm talk about? I didn't go to Washington. Agreed. Two quick things, like you mentioned, Bill Belichick and Mike Rabel on their couch, just like Joe Flacco was about yeah, four months yeah. ago. Um, let's talk about two quick things there. Bill Belichick. Here's why I think he doesn't have a job. People are worried that he's only going after 15 wins and Shula's record. Like, yeah. is it like, hey, I'm going to coach for two years? And that's why I'm a little shocked that Washington didn't bring him in, you know, with Josh Harris. Like, yeah, just too. Why he he had the ability to dish out a lot of money. And, mm-hmm. you know, I know Ben Johnson was looking for a lot of money, like $15 million money. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, having Josh Harris as your new owner, why why is he not trying to reinvent the culture after what happened with Snyder down there? I don't know. I I, I'm kind of shocked that Belichick's um, not – that wasn't talked about more. Um, Might be personnel, and, but I don't know if that's the full story. Yeah, because honestly, if you're Josh Harris, you're like, hey, we're just reinventing the culture. Uh, you get two years to get 15 wins. And then, and yeah. then, then you know what I mean? We'll figure it out. We'll but go from there, yeah. Mike Rabel, did you see the report that he – the bits and pieces of how he didn't get hired anywhere was because people were intimidated by him. We're I in mean, the NFL, Ethan. He we're is intimidating, but like – FL. I, I, that should be a plus. That should be like, uh, he intimidated the owner. Bring him in. He should intimidate the tallest and fattest and biggest offensive line, defensive line. He should be the biggest man in the room. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's great to see a guy like Jonathan Gannon, tiny little guy, scheming up shit. But you're going to respect Mike Vrabel when he walks in the room. Like, I was watching Will Compton and on uh, McAfee. He was like, you respect when he walks in. He puts the jewel down. He's yelling at everybody. Like, you respect Mike Vrabel. And maybe just like Belichick, it's the perfect scenario he's waiting for. These smart and good coaches don't just jump at an opportunity. They wait for their opportunity. So, I mean, I'm fascinated to see where they're going to go. Because, like, this time next year, who knows what job opening is going to be open? I mean, yeah, the only one you would have said last year was off the table might have been Bill Belichick. I mean, obviously, maybe, yeah. you know, um, Andy Reid, too. But maybe you, said, maybe you would have said Nick Sirianni, and he was on the – hot seat this soft season yeah you never know i'm very much looking forward to it two quick last things um yeah 
Bill Belichick, does he – do you see a possibility in your head that Andy Reid retires after winning the Super Bowl and says, let's bring Bill Belichick in here and coach Patrick Mahomes coach. for two years? Why not? Why not? <laughs> I, Last I would thing, love that for internet purposes only, just saying. I heard rumblings of Mike Vrabel possibly going to Ohio State if Ryan Day does not pan and live up to expectations – and doesn't beat Michigan again this year. Could you imagine Mike Rabel in college? Let me ask you a better question. Is it a downgrade if he goes to Ohio State over any position that could be open next year? I uh, Off the top of my head, I say no. The only, I, agree. I mean, it sounds crazy because it's so dependent on what happens next year. I think Mike Rabel would be a great fit in Philadelphia. Like, I really do. Um, so we'll see what happens with the Eagles next year. We'll, we'll get into that at some point. Maybe not today, but... We'll, we'll see. Let's talk for WIP. We'll save it for them. Uh, Correct. Let's start getting into some too early predictions. Let's let's get hot. So next year, I mean, the Super Bowl is days away. We are totally jumping the gun. But my first thing, just off the top of my head, is the Chicago Bears are going to make the playoffs led by Justin Fields. Oh, see that that's really that's really interesting because you had me in the first half. I'm not going to lie to you because I was going to say the Chicago Bears make the playoffs with Caleb Williams. No, I think, I mean, I, this is not what I think is going to happen. This is just a prediction. It's it's borderline a felony to have the first round, the first overall pick two years in a row and not take a quarterback. It is. And they should take a quarterback solely for that reason, in my opinion. But Fields is not Baker Mayfield. No disrespect. He's not these other guys who are, for lack of a better term, you know, placeholders. Fields Correct. has upside. He played very well at the end of the year. They finished with seven wins that, like, you know, draft or trade down two spots, get Marvin Harrison, get draft capital, get somebody with the seventh pick as well that they own. They have the opportunity to do something crazy, not agreeable, and, you know, people aren't going to love it, but I, I, the Bears have an amazing defense, and that offense is just a couple pieces away, and Caleb Williams looks great, but he isn't Patrick Mahomes, and people need to remember that. Here's the thing. Who, after seeing what Carolina did last year, trading up for Bryce Young, when they the, – Bryce Young, Yeah. let me be honest with you, Ethan. I think Bryce Young isn't even a top – going to be a top two, maybe not even top three quarterback in that class. I know it's early. I know he doesn't have a team around him. I understand that. Ethan, this time last year, I was telling, I was telling you, I was telling people, I thought Will Levis was going to be the best quarterback in the draft. I was not sold on Stroud. And it might have been because he went to Ohio State. Might not have been. No one saw uh, that coming from Stroud. So, but no one saw that, and everyone was, yeah. you know, talking about his wonderlick score and all. If, he, if the, the guy can throw a football better than half the league already, he's only played seventeen. He's, he's a actually, top ten quarterback, played, arguably already. No, we can't go there yet. We can't go there yet. It's another Absolutely. episode. That's another episode. We can't go there just yet. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think that there's so much potential when it comes to Caleb Williams that I, I, I almost want to call him generational, but who knows oh. these days? Who knows these days? I mean, look, if it, here's the problem. The guy wants ownership of a team. You can't do that. Oh, that whoa, whoa, that was thrown out there. That wasn't, that has not been like, you know, given any more weight since, but it's true. That's true. It's a, I know it's easy to throw tags on these guys before they get drafted because it's fun, et cetera, but we really don't know until they hit the field. We really don't. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So I'm excited to see it though. Maybe he's the next Ryan Leaf. Uh, yeah. Maybe, we'll have to maybe see who... it's going to be Peyton Manning, Ryan Leaf, which is going to be Caleb Williams, Drake May. <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, they're both not going to be all pro pro bowlers. One of them is going to be terrible, but they both look good. It's going to be tough. But I'm really excited for the draft, but the draft is a topic for another time. Let's talk a little hoops, Davis. It is February 7th. It's not quite March yet. It's not quite summer yet so the nba march madness aren't heating up but they're right around the corner davis we are hitting the sweet spot the super bowl is something with the treasure because it's the last football we have for a while but basketball season's coming so davis speaking of the nba trade line is tomorrow it's mm -hmm. less than 24 hours away as we speak uh there's been a couple of moves made i saw monte L or monte morris got traded who cares what are your bold predictions for tomorrow. It's not going to be explosive per usual, but something's going to happen. Uh, I would say my first bold prediction 
Uh, it's tough because, you know, there's a lot of rumors always going around. Last year's trade deadline was insane. Uh, yeah. People get moved around. KD get moved. I mean, crazy stuff. Um, I don't think there's going to be – it's going to be as crazy this year. But uh, the Golden State Warriors play the 76ers tonight here in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. I think one of the Golden State Warriors, most likely Andrew Wiggins, does not go home and stays in Philadelphia. Oh, I like that. That is going to be Andrew my Wiggins. prediction. Uh, there's a lot of talks about Clay too. Uh, uh, there are. Uh, I mean, yeah, I've seen that. There are some offshore books where actually he's the favorite to be a 76er on Friday. I saw that. Uh, yeah. So it's going to be interesting, but I think it's going to be Andrew Wiggins. Yeah, I, I I like that. I like that a lot. Mine is, I mean, I, I, it's not going to be anything crazy. Like, you know, Dame's already been traded. Donovan Mitchell's not getting traded again. But, I, I mean, I think, I really do think that the Knicks might do something tomorrow. I think that they might go after one final piece. Maybe Bruce Brown. They should. Maybe, I don't know, somebody else. Like, Because the Pacers have made moves. The, the Bucks, you know, not for better or worse, but they hired Doc Rivers. The Celtics, I saw, made a trade today. The Cavs are like 14 in the last 15. The Sixers are down, but like it is time for the Knicks to establish themselves. They have been playing so well. Like the Villanova yeah, Knicks have been playing so well. It's hard not to be a fan as a Villanova fan. I mean, I'm a Sixers fan through and through, but it's cool to see Brunson and them going off. But they need one more piece to get over the hump. They, they really are close to being a contender, which is weird to say because these New York teams aren't usually like this, but the Knicks are almost as legit as it gets, and I think they need something else. I don't know what it is, but maybe I Buddy Heald. Who knows? What they need is Julius Randle to get healthy first. But uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Who cares? review the trade deadline uh, You know, yeah. once that passes. Again, I don't think it's going to be sure. anything crazy. But speaking of Villanova, are, yeah, is Villanova uh, going to make the tournament this year? They no, took, they're not. They, they, I mean, decent win against Providence the other night. Sure, um, sure. I mean, Sunday. they – they they had already lost a couple of really bad games. The Butler one, I think it was two weekends ago now, and a double overtime really, really sticks in the head. Uh, they lost to Marquette after being down, then up, then down. It, like it's a roller coaster season. And I mean, the Big East is tough this year. UConn is so freaking good. Uh, Marquette is good. It's it's tough. And I, I'm gonna say no. But I mean, let's let's talk about college basketball as a whole. I mean. One team that Villanova beat that I've been having on my radar is UNC. They were number three yesterday, ranked after a huge win at home against Duke, but they lost to Clemson last night. What now? Look, another another nice ticket I have in uh, in my back pocket, 35-1 to 1 there for them to win the title. Uh, I put that in probably about a month ago. I don't know. I think – look around college hoops this year. Uh, every single team has a bad loss this year. It's just going to happen yep. to all these teams. And then Purdue is five like usual. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, Two, sorry. even Kansas lost to Kansas State the other night. I mean, you yep. look at college basketball and the more the more invested I'm getting on a night to night basis, not just watching on Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah, there is such a home court advantage. And seeing the teams that play really well on the road are the teams that I think you want to keep an eye on when it comes For to sure. conference championships and or conference tournaments and March Madness. So we'll yep. get there. Um, you know, I know. We'll have to look back at our conference championship podcast we did two years ago, see what our predictions <laughs> looked like after we ended up recording. But probably we'll not good because probably not good. But um, you know, the one thing I do want to say, the one team I'm very down on, I'm clearly up on UNC. Um, I'm definitely up on UConn. Uh, very down on two things: the entire Big Ten and Arizona. Those are the two things. Yep. I, I I think Arizona could be another first round upset this year. I know they lost to Princeton Agreed. last year. Just because they got Caleb Love does not change anything. Um, correct. Then I think for – has it? I don't remember if it happened last year, but uh, the notorious no Big Ten teams in the Elite Eight can, streak continues. <laughs> I agree. I mean, Purdue is Purdue. Uh, and then besides that, I'm looking at the rankings right now. Wisconsin just lost to Purdue. So I don't know yeah. how great you feel about Look, that. Purdue's and then, good, but they're, at least their guards are getting – like so the big thing about them last year was that their guards were so young and you know they, they could lose any game because they can't shoot well. This year they're getting a little better. The guards have a yeah, year of experience, more of a year of experience. But they have Zach Eady, and when you play a team like Northwestern like they did last week and they win the free throw battle 44-6 to – uh, yeah. It's pretty hard to lose basketball games that way. So For when they sure. run into Big 12 refs in March Madness, we'll, uh, that's going to be a different story. Oh, I can't wait for that. I mean, 
the mix and matching of conferences, you don't realize how impactful it is, especially in the regular season as well. Because, I mean, all things go off the table when it's non-conference, conference. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. But I just wanted to talk one more th- – or one second about – the bottom half of this rankings list. I'm looking at teams like Florida Atlantic, BYU, Utah State, San Diego State, who was on the Final Four last year, as well as Florida Atlantic, Dayton. What what are these what are these teams doing there? Are they going to make an impact in the tournament? Because these are teams we don't see on this rankings list usually. Yeah. So I think you know, off the top of my head, I'm thinking of some teams and, you know, I listen to a great podcast every day. They, uh, they're they based out of Las Vegas. So there's a lot of West, uh, you know, teams out West that they follow yeah. daily on a daily basis. There are some interesting teams in the Mountain West that, you know, San Diego yeah. State made the tur- made um, the Final Four. national championship, championship. national yep. championship and lost last year. Um, the Mountain West has been notoriously bad in March Madness, but teams like Utah State, San Diego State, even Nevada and Boise State have all been fantastic this year. Um, I think there could be some sleepers, including, you know, I don't think FAU is the same FAU that we saw last year, but yeah. I think there definitely could be some sleepers the way that yeah. college basketball has been running this year on, you know, upset central on a daily basis. Which is what makes college basketball awesome. Anything can happen. And we are heading right to the corner where, I mean, you know, there's the favorites. There's UConn, Purdue, UNC, Kansas at the top, but anything can happen. The Gamecocks are killing it right now. I mean, yeah. you look at a bunch of teams around the league, like Kentucky and Alabama are not the same, but they are still good. The SEC is still good. Like, this is going to be a very fun next month and a half, whatever it is we have left at college basketball. Correct. And last uh, pick, I would probably say, is Houston. Houston's defense has been phenomenal. They're moved Even to though the they just lost to Kansas? Even though they just lost to Kansas, um, Houston, in my opinion, is the second best team in college basketball right now behind UConn. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. I mean, Kansas is still going to be tough. Uh, like they have Bill Self as usual. They have a great rotation. Uh, that guy McCullers is really good. And then obviously Hunter Dickinson. Like it's not the same Kansas team. They will be a tough out. Like not a big Kansas fan as a Villanova guy myself, but I, I'm a little afraid of Kansas this year. And let's not forget they won two years ago. They're hot. Yeah, some no, agreed. Even though they just lost to K State, but we'll sure, uh, sure. we'll, we'll see. Um, we'll Ethan, see. one more thing I wanted to bring up to you today: pitchers and catchers report on the twelfth. I know we're I know we're kind of running through all these all the sports today. We'll you know it's it's going to happen. Time passes really quickly. I mean, it just feels like we were sitting at Game Seven three weeks ago, and the Phillies are heading to Clearwater very yeah. soon. The bags are being packed. Correct. Uh, I have one question I was thinking about um, really all, all right. week actually for you. Um, if I were to give you the Dodgers or the Yankees to win the World Series, Dodgers get Shohei Otani, uh, they get the uh, Yamamoto um, from yep. Japan, then uh, even Tyler Glass now. I mean, their yeah. team is stacked this year. And I also give you the Yankees, a team that just added Juan Soto, um, in my opinion, probably a top three underrated player in baseball uh, due to the amount he walks. Uh, he doesn't strike out very much, all that kind of good stuff. If I were to give you those two teams and I take the other 28 teams, like which would which scenario would you rather have? Would you rather have just those two to win the World Series or would you rather have any of the 28 other teams, Atlanta, the Phillies, the Mets, the you even got the Red Sox in there who are probably going to play well. The, the defending champion, yeah. Texas Rangers. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, we just talked about the NFL. Like, it's so rare you see two preseason heavyweights like this ever get to a championship. And when it does, you're, you're just happy to see it. I don't I don't know if that will be the case here. But I'm going to take I'm going to take the Yankees. I'm going to straight up take the Yankees. I, I, I mean, I don't say, I'm not saying they're going to win the World Series, but I think they're more likely to get there than the Dodgers. Um, I like Juan Soto a lot. Like, I think that's the perfect sp- space for him. The West Coast didn't work. Something was going on in the Padres organization. I don't really know still, but it was a bad fit last year. And, I mean, I think that will fit in perfect for their culture. Like, they have been missing something. I know they've Aaron Judge, and he set the record, whatever record it was last year. Like, this is the miss- missing piece. They, I don't know if they'll make the playoffs, how far they'll go, whatever, but I feel a lot more confident in the Yankees than the Dodgers. The Dodgers will lose to the Padres in an LDS next year. And Otani will just fl- like flame out and waste his contract. In my yeah. Opinion. See, I'm on the other side of things because it's baseball and anything can happen. Look at the Phillies yeah. the last two years beating up on the Braves. But let me and give the Diamondbacks dark- were in the World Series against the Rangers. Correct. Correct. Let me give you a dark horse team. Okay. 
The Baltimore Orioles. Who just gonna, got Corbin like, Burns and sold their the, team. Yeah. I'll also give you another hot take. Adelie Rushman wins MVP. I like it. I'm a big Adley Rushman fan. Obviously, Real Muto is my catcher, but I like it. I like it. He is a tank. Hitting homer from both sides in the derby last year was one of the most impressive things I've seen. Like, as Correct. a catcher, too. Like, yeah. Insanely impressive. So, I think, I mean, look, they're at the point now where, the, you know, Angelos is gone. Uh, you yeah. know, the, he's not pinching, we're not pinching pockets anymore, looking for just loose change to pay to guy. Like, I think they're going to splash and they're going to open the pocketbooks. They're going to swipe the credit card. And I wouldn't be shocked if they make a big move at some point. Um, but yeah. I think they're going to be, I think they're going to be a big hot topic. And I think the other hot topic honestly is going to be the NL central. I, I don't, I don't know who wins the NL central this year. The Reds got a big, big streak last year uh, during yeah. the summer when uh, De La Cruz came up, yeah, uh, the Cubs yeah. made some good free agency signings. You know, I don't we know. Got a new manager. I don't know yep. what's going on with Bellinger right now. Um, and then the Brewers, so up and down, even though they've won the division the last few years, if I yeah. remember correctly, but no Cor Corbin Burns anymore. So I think those are going to be two really interesting topics that we'll have uh, the whole month of February and March. To Me too. About. Dude, I I mean, I'm that division is going to be crazy. I was thinking about that a little bit too, but like, I'm really excited for baseball. The Phillies were so close last year, and I can't wait to see what happens this year. It's craziness. We have the LA and New York's heavyweights as well as the Rangers down south. Like it's gonna be a fun, fun MLB season. And you know, we still got a little bit of time left, but let's enjoy this last football game we have this Sunday because pitchers and catchers are right around the corner. Yep, agreed. And let me end on one thing, Ethan. I don't know if you have anything. I'm gonna give it to you. Pick of the day. I know I started that group chat, started giving you guys some picks. Yep. Wasn't going great. You know what though? Because I let's say I had three bets going on. I would give you one. I would do two myself. I'd go two and three, and the one I gave you was terrible. So we're going to start. I'm going to start it off here with a bang. Brandon Miller over 30 and a half points, rebounds, assists. We'll see how it pans out it. tomorrow. I don't know when this gets posted, but over 30 and a half points, rebounds, assists. He's been hot. He has been hot recently. I love it. Scoring. I like He's Brandon gone Miller. over his 21 and a half points. He's a real shooter. For the last five games. He is He's a real shooter. He is a real shooter. And you know what? Good for him. Yes, uh, my pick of the day. Just because I didn't have this prepared, I'm gonna I can install up on my phone. I'm gonna ride with Villanova money line tonight. They're facing Butler in like Ooh. ten minutes. Okay. Uh, Xavier's the fit. Or sorry, they're facing Xavier. Xavier is a three point favorite, but I like my Wildcats on the road. Classic Homer mentality right there. Oh, come on, go Cats, baby, go Cats. <laughs> anyway, Ethan, we want to be back. I just want to say we want to thank you guys for watching. It is so good to be back. It feels good to fire up the microphone again. We will get back to you soon. We're not making promises anymore. We will be back to you guys soon. I don't know when, but look out for Bocce Boys content because we love doing this. And the more you like, subscribe, share, all that stuff, the more we'll do it. So all that stuff, thank you very much. And Bocce Boys are out. Peace. Summer, all I did was rest. New Year's, all I did was stretch. Valentine's Day, I had sex. We'll see what's about to happen next. This ain't no regular shit. We never begging for shit. Niggas is ready to quit. Shit that they hate to admit. In Texas, I keep a rifle inside of the whip, call it driving a stick. In Vegas, I get two million a night from the wind just to run through the hits. All that on top of the chips.